Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is reading the Bible in 123 days. We're on day 43. Today we'll be reading 2 Kings 7 through 13. So we're continuing on with Elisha's story. 2 Kings 7 verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of Yahweh. Thus saith Yahweh, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, in the gate of Samaria. Then a lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God, and said, Behold, if Yahweh will, would make windows in heaven, I might, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit here we... Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come, let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live, and if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. The Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the king of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. But when these lepers came, to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent, and did eat and drink, and carried thence silver and gold and raiment, and went and hid it, and came again and entered into another tent, and carried thence also, and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, We do not well, this day is day of good tidings, and we hold our peace, if we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king's household. So they came and called unto the porter of the city, and they told them, saying, We came to camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man, but horses tied, and asses tied, and the tents as they were. And he called the porters, and they told it to the king's house within. And the king arose in the night, and said unto the servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we be hungry, therefore they are gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, When they come out to the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. And one of his servants answered and said, Let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain which are left in the city. Behold, they are as all the multitude of Israel that are left in it. Behold, I say, they are even as all the multitude of the Israelites that are consumed. And let us send and see. They took therefore two chariots, and the king sent after the host of the Syrians, saying, Go and see. They went after them unto Jordan, and lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. And the messengers returned and told the king. And the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians, so a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of Yahweh. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate, and the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. And as the man of God had said, who spake when the king came down to him? And it came to pass, as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shekel, and a measure of fine flour for a shekel, shall be tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. And that Lord answered the man of God, and said, Now behold, if Yahweh should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. And so it fell out unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. Second Kings 8 Then spake Elisha unto the woman, whose son had he restored to life, saying, Arise, and go thou in thine household, and sojourn wheresoever thou canst sojourn. For Yahweh hath called for a famine, and it shall also come upon the land seven years. And the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God, and she went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass at the seven years' end that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines, and she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, 
Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha hath done. And it came to pass as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that, behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. And Elisha came to Damascus, and Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, was sick. And it was told him, saying, The man of God is come hither. The king said unto Hazael, Take a present in thine hand, and go and meet the man of God, and require of Yahweh by him, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? So Hazael went to meet him, and took a present with him, even of every good thing at Damascus, forty camels burden, and came and stood before him, and said, Thy son Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, hath sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? And Elisha said unto him, Go, say unto him, Thou mayest certainly recover, howbeit Yahweh hath showed me that he shall surely die. And he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed, and the man of God wept. And Hazael said, Why weepeth my lord? And he answered, Because I know the evil that thou wilt do unto the children of Israel, their strongholds that wilt set on fire, their young men wilt thou slay with the sword, and wilt dash their children, and rip up their women with child. And Hazael said, But what, is thy servant a dog, that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, Yahweh has showed me that thou shalt be king over Syria. So he departed from Elisha, and came to his master, and said to him, What said Elisha to thee? And he answers, He told me that thou shouldst surely recover. And it came to pass on the morrow that he took a thick cloth and dipped it in water and spread it on his face, so that he died, and Hazael reigned in his stead. And in the fifth year of Jeram, son of Ahab, king of Israel, Jehoshaphat being then king of Judah, Jeram, son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. Thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel and did as the house of Ahab. For the daughter of Ahab was his wife, and he did evil things, evil in the sight of Yahweh. Yet Yahweh would not destroy Judah for David his servant's sake, as he promised him to give him always a light into his children. In his days, Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah and made a king over themselves. So Joram went over to Zair and all the chariots with him, and he rose by night and smote the Edomites which compassed him about, and the captains of the chariots and the people fled into their tents. Yet Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. Then Libna revolted at the same time. The rest of the acts of Joram and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the king of Judah? And Joram slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, and Uzziah his son reigned in his stead. In the twelfth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, did Isaiah, the son of Joram, king of Judah, begin to reign. Two and twenty years old was Isaiah when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri, king of Israel. And he walked in the way of the house of Ahab, and did evil in the sight of Yahweh, as did the house of Ahab, for he was the son-in-law of the house of Ahab. And he went with Joram the son of Ahab to the war against Hazael king of Syria and Ramoth Gilead, and the Syrians wounded Joram. And king Joram went back to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him at Ramah, when he fought against Hazael king of Syria. And Isaiah the son of Joram king of Judah went down to see Joram the son of Ahab in Jezreel, because he was sick. Second Kings 9 and Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Gird up thy loins and take this box of oil in thine hand and go to Ramoth Galid. And when thou comest thither, look out there, Jehu the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him into an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus saith Yahweh, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and tarry not. So the young man, even the young man, the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting, and he said, 
I have an errand to thee, O captain. And Jehu said, Unto which of all us? And he said, To thee, O captain. He arose and went into the house, and he poured oil on his head, and said unto him, Thus saith Yahweh God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of Yahweh, even over Israel. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab my master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of Yahweh, at the hand of Jezebel. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab him that pesteth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha the son of Aijah. The dogs shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Then Jehu came forth to the servants of his lord, and one said unto him, Is all well? Wherefore came this mad fellow to thee? And he said unto them, You know the man in his communication. And they said, It is false. Tell us now. And he said, Thus and thus spake he to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh. I have anointed the king over Israel. And then they hasted and took every man his garment and put it under him on top of the stairs and blew a trumpet, saying, Jehu is king. So Jehu the son of Jehoshaphat the son of Nimshi conspired against Jeram. Now Jeram had kept Ramoth gleed, he and all Israel, because of Hazael king of Syria. But King Jeram was returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him when he fought with Hazael king of Syria. And Jehu said, If it be your minds, then let none go forth nor escape out of the city to go tell in Jezreel. So Jehu rode in a chariot and went to Jezreel, for Joram lay there, and Isaiah king of Judah was come down to see Joram. And there stood a watchman on the tower in Jezreel, and he spied the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company. And Joram said, Take a horseman and send to meet them, and let him say, Is it peace? So they went one on horseback to meet him, and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, The messenger came to them, but he cometh not again. And he sent out a second on horseback, which came to them, and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Jehu answered, What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, He came even unto them, and cometh not again. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshi, for he driveth furiously. And Jerem said, Make ready. And his chariot was made ready, and Jerem king of Israel and Isaiah king of Judah went out, each in his chariot, and they went out against Jehu, and met him in the portion of Naboth the Jezreelite. It came to pass when Jerem saw Jehu that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? He answered, What peace, so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many? And Joram turned his hands and fled, and said to Isaiah, There is treachery, O Isaiah. And Jehu drew a bow with his full strength, and smote Joram between his arms. And the arrow went out at his heart, and he sunk down in his chariot. Then said Jehu to Bidkar, his captain, Take off and cast him in the portion of the field of Naboth the Jezreelite. For I remember how that when I and thou rode together after Ahab his father, Yahweh laid this burden upon him. Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his son, said, saith Yahweh, and I will requite thee this in this plat, saith Yahweh. Now therefore take and cast him into the plat of ground according to the word of Yahweh. But when Isaiah the king of Judah saw this, he fled by the way of the garden house, and Jehu followed after him and said, Smite him also in the chariot. And they did so at the going up of Gur, which is by Iblim, and he fled to Megiddo and died there. And his servants carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem, and buried him in a sepulchre with his fathers in the city of David. And in the eleventh year of Joram, the son of Ahab, began, began Isaiah to reign over Judah. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face and tried her head, and looked out a window. And as Jehu entered into the gate, she said, Had Zimri peace? Who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window, and said, Who is on my side? Who? And then looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So he threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he trod her underfoot. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink, and said, 
Go see now this cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. They went to bury her, but they found no more of her than a skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of Yahweh, which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall the dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel. And the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, This is Jezebel. Second Kings 10 And Ahab set, had seventy sons in Samaria, and Jehu wrote letters and sent to Samaria unto the rulers of Jezreel, and to the elders, and to them that brought up Ahab's children, saying, Now as soon as this letter cometh to you, seeing your master's sons are with you, there are with you chariots and horses, a fenced city also, and armor. Look even out the best and medest of your master's sons, and set him on his father's throne to fight for your master's house. But they were exceedingly afraid, and said, Behold, two kins, kings stood not before him. How shall we stand? And he that was over the house, and he that was over the city, the elders also, and the bringers up of the children, sent to Jehu, saying, We are thy servants, and will do all that thou shalt build us. We will not make any king. Do thou that which is good in, in thine eyes. And he wrote a letter the second time to them, saying, If ye be mine, if ye will hearken unto my voice, take ye the heads of the men of your master's sons, and come to me in Jezreel by tomorrow this time. Now the king's sons, being seventy persons, were with the great men of the city which brought them up. And it came to pass when the letter came to them that they took the king's sons and slew seventy persons and put their heads in baskets and sent them to Jezreel. And there came a messenger and told him, saying, they have brought the heads of the king's sons, and he said, Lay them in two heaps at the entering of the gate until the morning. It came to pass in the morning that he went out and stood and said to all the people, Ye be righteous, behold, I conspired against my master and slew him, but slew, who slew all these? Know now that there shall fall into the earth nothing of the word of Yahweh, which Yahweh spake concerning the house of Ahab, for Yahweh hath done that which he spake by his servant Elijah. So Jehu slew all that remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all his great men, and all his kinsfolk, and his priests, until he left none remaining. And he arose and departed, and came to Samaria, and as he was at the shearing house in the way, Jehu met with the brethren of Uzziah king of Judah, and said, Who are ye? And they answered, We are the brethren of Uzziah, and we go down to salute the children of the king of the children, and the children of the queen. And he said, Take them alive. And they took them alive, and slew them at the pit of the shearing house, even two and forty men, neither left he of any of them. And when he was departed thence, he lighted on Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he slew him, and said to him, Is thine heart right, as my heart is with thy heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is, if it be, give me thine hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took him up to him into the chariot. And he said, Come with me, and see my zeal for Yahweh. So they made him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, he slew all that remained unto Ahab in Samaria, till he had destroyed him, according to the saying of Yahweh, which he spake to Elijah. And Jehu gathered all the people together, and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal and all his servants and all his priests. Let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live, but Jehu did it in subtlety, to the intent that he might destroy the worshippers of Baal. And Jehu said, Proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal, and they proclaimed it. And Jehu sent through all Israel, and all, that, all the worshippers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left that came not. And they came into the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was full from one end to another. And he said unto him that was over the vestry, Bring forth vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. And he brought them forth vestments. And Jehu went, and Jehonadab the son of Rechab, into the house of Baal, and said unto the worshippers of Baal, 
Search and look that there be here with you none of the servants of Yahweh, but the worshippers of Baal only. So when they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings, Jehu appointed fourscore men without and said, If any of the men whom I have brought into your hands escape, he that letteth him go, his life shall be for the life of him. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, Go in and slay them, let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and the guard and the captains cast them out, and went to the city of the house of Baal. And they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal and burned them. And they break down the image of Baal, and break down the house of Baal, and made it a draught house unto this day. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. Albeit from the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin, Jehu departed not from after them, to wit, the golden calves that were in Bethel, and that were in Dan. And Yahweh said unto Jehu, Because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in mine eyes, and hast done unto the house of Ahab according to all that was in mine heart, Thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of Yahweh, God of Israel, with all his heart, for he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. In those days Yahweh began to cut Israel short, and Hazael smote them in all the coast of Israel. From Jordan eastward, all the land of Gilead, the Gadites, and the Reubenites, and the Manassites, from Arar, which is by the river Arnon, even Gilead and Bashan. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu, and all that he did, and all his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? And Jehu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Jehoaz his son reigned in his stead. The time that Jehu reigned over Israel in Samaria was twenty and eight years. Second Kings 11 And when Athaliah, the mother of Uzziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. But Jehosheba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Uzziah, took Joash, the son of Uzziah, and stole him from among the king's sons which were slain, and they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. And he was with her hid in the house of Yahweh six years, and Athaliah did reign over the land. In the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and fetched the rulers of her hundreds with the captains and the guard and brought them in him into the house of Yahweh and made a covenant with them and took an oath of them in the house of Yahweh and showed them the king's son. And he commanded them, saying, This is the thing that ye shall do, a third part of you that enter and on the Sabbath shall even be keepers of the watch of the king's house. And the third part shall be at the gate of Sur, and the third part at the gate behind the guard. So you shall keep the watch of the house, that it be not broken down. And two parts of all you that go forth on the Sabbath, even they shall keep the watch of the house of Yahweh about the king. And you shall compass the king round about, every man with his weapons in his hand, and he that cometh within ranges, let him be slain. And be ye with the king as he goeth out, and as he cometh in. And the captains over the hundreds did according to all the things that Jehoiada the priest commanded. And they took every man his men that were to come in on the Sabbath with them that should go out on the Sabbath and came to Jehoiada the priest. And the captains over hundreds did the priests give King David spears and shields that were in the temple of Yahweh. And the guards stood every man with his weapons in his hand round about the king from the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple along by the altar in the temple. And he brought forth the king's son and put the crown upon him and gave him the testimony and they made him king and anointed him. And they clapped their hands and said, God save the king. And when Athaliah heard the noise of the garden and the people, she came to the people into the temple of Yahweh. And when she looked, behold, the king stood by a pillar as manner was. And the princes and the trumpeters by the king and all the people of the land rejoiced and blew with trumpets, and Athaliah rent her clothes and cried, Treason, treason! But Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains of hundreds, the officer of the host, and said unto them, 
Have her forth without the ranges, and him that followeth her kill with the sword. For the priest hath said, Let her not be slain in the house of Yahweh. They laid hands on her, and she went by the way by the which the horses came into the king's house, and there was she slain. And Jehoiada made a covenant between Yahweh and the king and the people that they should be Yahweh's people between the king also and the people. And all the people of the land went into the house of Baal and break it down. His altars and his images break they in pieces thoroughly and slew Matan the priest of Baal before the altars and the priests appointed officers over the house of Yahweh. And he took the rulers over hundreds and captains and the guard and all the people of the land and they brought down the king from the house of Yahweh and came by the way of the gate of the guard to the king's house and he sat on the throne of the kings and all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was in quiet and they slew Athaliah with the sword beside the king's house seven years old was Jehoash when he began to reign second kings 12 in the seventh year of Jehu Jehoash began to reign and forty years reigned he in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Zebiah of Beersheba Jehoash did that which was right in the sight of Yahweh all his days wherein Jehoiada the priest instructed him but the high places were not taken away the people still sacrificed and burnt incense in high places and Jehoash said to the priests all the money of the dedicated things that is brought into the house of Yahweh even the money of every one that passeth the account the money that every man is set at, and all the money that cometh into any man's heart to bring into the house of Yahweh. Let the priest take it to them, every man of his acquaintance, and let them repair the breaches of the house, wheresoever any breach shall be found. But it was so that in the three and twentieth year of King Jehoash the priest had not repaired the breaches of the house. And King Jehoash called for Jehoiada the priest, and other priests and said unto them why repair ye not the breaches of the house now therefore receive no more money of your acquaintance but deliver it for the breaches of the house and the priest consented to receive no more money of the people neither to repair the breaches of the house the Jehoiada the priest took a chest and bored a hole in the lid of it and set it beside the altar on the right side is one that cometh into the house of Yahweh and the priest that kept the door put therein all the money that was brought into the house of Yahweh and it was so when they saw that there was much money in the chest that the king's scribe and the high priest came up and they put up the bags and told the money that was found in the house of Yahweh. And they gave the money being told into the hands of them that did the work that had the oversight of the house of Yahweh and they laid it out to the carpenters and builders that wrought upon the house of Yahweh and to masons and hewers of stone and to buy timber and hewed stone to repair the breaches of the house of Yahweh and for all that was laid out for the house to repair it. Albeit there was not made for the house of Yahweh bulls of silver, snuffers, basins, trumpets, any vessels of gold or vessels of silver of the money that was brought into the house of Yahweh. They gave that to the workmen and repaired therewith the house of Yahweh. Moreover, they reckoned not with the men into whose hand they delivered the money to be bestowed on the workmen, for they dealt faithfully. The trespass money and the sin money was not brought into the house of Yahweh. It was the priests. And then Hazael king of Syria went up and fought against Gath and took it. And Hazael set his face to go up to Jerusalem. And Jehoash king of Judah took all the hallowed things that Jehoshaphat and Jeroram and Isaiah his fathers king of Judah had dedicated and his own hallowed things and all the gold that was found in the treasuries of the house of Yahweh and in the king's house, and sent it to Hazael king of Syria, and he went away from Jerusalem. And the rest of the acts of Jehoash, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And his servants arose and made a conspiracy, to, and slew Jehoash in the house of Milo, which go down to Selah. For Jozakar, the son of Shimeath, and Jehazabad, son of Shomar, his servants smote him, and he died, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And Amaziah, his son, reigned in his stead. 2 Kings 13 In the three and twentieth year, Josh, the son of Amaziah, king of Judah, 
Jehoaz the son of Jehu began to reign over Israel in Samaria and reigned seventeen years and he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh and followed the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebet which made Israel to sin he departed not therefrom the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Israel and he delivered them into the hand of Hazael king of Syria and into the hand of Ben-Hadad the son of Hazael all their days and Jehoahaz besought Yahweh, and Yahweh hearkened unto him, for he saw the oppression of Israel, because the king of Syria oppressed them. And Yahweh gave Israel a savior, so that they went out under the hand of the Syrians, and the children of Israel dwelt in their tents as before time. Nevertheless, they departed not from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, who made Israel sin, but walked therein. And they remained a grove also in Samaria. Neither did he leave of the people to Jehoaz, but fifty horsemen and ten chariots and ten thousand footmen, for the king of Syria had destroyed them and had made them like the dust by threshing. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoaz and all that he did in his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jehoaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria, and Joash his son reigned in his stead. In the thirty-seventh the year of Joash king of Judah began Jehoash the son of Jehoaz to reign in, over Israel in Samaria and reigned sixteen years and he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh and departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebet who made Israel sin but he walked therein and the rest of the acts of Jehoash and all that he did in his might wherewith he fought against Amaziah king of Judah are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel and Josh slept with his fathers, and Jeroboam sat upon his throne, and Josh was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died, and Josh the king of Israel came down unto him, and wept over his face, and said, O my father, my father, the chariot of Israel, the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take bows and arrows, and he took unto him a bow and arrow. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it, and Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands, and he said, Open the window eastward, and he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot, and he shot, and he said, The arrow of Yahweh's deliverance, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria, for thou shalt smite the Syrians in Ephek, till thou hast consumed them. And he said, Take the arrows, and he took them, and he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground, and he smote thrice, and stayed. And the man of God was wroth with him, and said, Thou shouldest have smit, smitten five or six times, then, thou, then hast thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed it, whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. And Elisha died, and they buried him, and the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that, behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha, and when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood upon his feet. But Hazael the king of Syria oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoaz. And Yahweh was gracious unto them, and had compassion on them, and had respect unto them, because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and would not destroy them, neither cast he them from his presence as yet. But Hazael king of Syria died, and Ben-Hadad his son reigned in his stead. Jehoash the son of Jehoaz took again out of the hand of Ben-Hadad the son of Hazael the cities which he had taken out of the hand of Jehoaz his father by war. Three times did Josh beat him and recover the cities of Israel. Okay, well, it's a lot of information, but uh, there's still a message that we can glean, and that is to follow God no matter what we think might happen. We have to trust in him fully. So that's gonna be for today guys. Thanks for joining me. I hope you have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in him, trust in him, and wait upon him. And you'll never be sorry. And we'll see you tomorrow, God willingly, with more Bible reading. So thanks and see you later.